Good morning, uh, Inspiration. Uh, there in Oakhampton in the UK. Uh, wonderful to uh, share with you on this uh, Sunday morning and to have a uh, contact with you, a part of our uh, connected family and part of the COTN family, of course, Church of the Nations globally. We're so blessed to walk with you and for Marin and I, we miss seeing you in person, but uh, we're very thankful that although there's still certain lockdown restrictions and different restrictions between nations, although we can't get together face to face, we can uh, at least connect through uh, this way of uh, uh, online. And so um, it's, it's, it's a real wonderful joy just to be able to make that contact. Just last weekend, I was up in Pennsylvania here in the US and ministering for the first time in a face-to-face, person-to-person kind of way. And I was joking with them there saying, last time I did that, it was in December 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2019, in December 2019, uh, there in the UK when we had a, a time together up near Heathrow Airport and then also around that same time here in the US and uh, that time I was 72 years old this second time next time I'm doing it now I'm 74 so it seems a long while when you think of it like that but of course it's been a very full year as well just communicating in so many different ways you know I'm um, I realize that many are looking in a time like this for some profound deep word or deep prophetic word of what things are going to look like post COVID and how will the church operate and et cetera. And how will the business and marketplace be? Where will markets be and all that kind of thing. But I've been thinking a lot through this time of realizing that maybe the answer may not be in the spectacular, but simply in us, uh, just really living our lives out in very simply, but very naturally supernatural. For many years, as you know, I've taught around the whole idea of the simple church and also around areas of how to live naturally supernatural. But I've just somehow realized over these last weeks, in particular, even more, just as we transfer again back into all that God has for us, it's, I believe it's going to be very, very simple and how simple always God meant church to be. It's wonderful to know that Jesus, when he came, he didn't start come to start a structure or start a religion or start a list of rules and regulations and laws, but he came to introduce us back to our father so we could live family life, relational life in a fairly simple way, really loving Jesus with all of our heart and getting about his business, what he's doing on earth. And uh, it's a wonderful. And so I'd like to share with you just a couple of foundations around there that I've shared in some other places as well and shared with you at other times. But just to remind you of them today, that in Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That's a very special uh, truth when you look at that and realize that there's two things here that I believe Jesus is referring to. One is our very fundamental uh, truth is that we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness above everything else, and then everything else will get added to us. But it says, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, which is not just the activity of his kingdom on earth, although that's very, very important in the growth of it, But his righteousness, our right standing with the king and introducing many other people uh, into that knowledge of Jesus as Lord and Savior and their reason for being here on earth um, and fulfilling that. As I've said before, but as um, one British scholar said many years ago, there are two great days in a person's life. Number one, the day that they're born. And secondly, the day they realize why. And I believe coming through this whole season that we've gone through the last 12, 15 months or so, many people have found the fresh, their destiny, their reason for being here. And if we can see that big picture of what God's about on the earth, although he didn't give us COVID, he's using it together for our good. And uh, we begin to seek what he's really about and earnestly give ourselves to that. And our right standing with the king and his righteousness in our life, in culture, in our cities, our towns, our villages, 
we're going to see a wonderful increase of the harvest um, for Jesus on the earth. When you think about kingdom, obviously we think about king. He's the center of the kingdom and he rules over that kingdom. And so we must remind ourselves afresh, even in a time like this, that everything we're about is firstly about him. It's not about us. It's not about our blessing. It's not about how good we're feeling or doing. It's about him. We seek first his kingdom and it's about the king of that kingdom. I am so blessed to have learnt and understood some of the truths around this area over the years. And it's just my passion that I will be able to encourage as many people as possible, obviously to get to know the King uh, through who is Jesus, but to know through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection that could bring us into newness of life and give us purpose. But to just be able to encourage people into their life and destiny and live their life knowing they're an ambassador of a king and a kingdom on earth. So everything we do first is about the king. What does that mean in essence? It means really that we are here not just to express the work of the kingdom, but to increase his kingdom on earth, which is to be able to introduce as many people as we can into the saving grace of Jesus, into the knowledge of Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, and through that, in to work out their full life and destiny of working through their salvation and purpose for being here in their life. So we become a royal family. It's, uh, it's, it's great to know that um, we're a part of a family. And that family that we call the Church of Jesus Christ, you know, has a dad, a heavenly father. And uh, his great reason for sending Jesus was that he may be able to reconcile us back to the Father and reconcile the earth and the, and, the, and the kingdoms of this world back to him and the kingdoms of his God. What God's original purpose was when he created humanity, and we read about that back in Genesis, of course, when he created the whole earth, that's still his purpose today, is to see that whole earth and everybody on that earth loving and serving him and submitting and, and committed to his purposes on earth. You know, we are called to live in this world, of course, but we're not called to be of it. And so I'm going to enlarge on that in just a, a little bit more in just a moment. As many of you, you know, my background um, was with the Salvation Army. And uh, all those years back, growing up on the island of Tasmania in Australia and then getting married and going on the train um, in the Salvation Army, which is 50 years ago now, a long while when I think of it like that. But I was raised there and the founder of the Salvation Army and his beliefs really did have impact on me, even though as I only read of them or knew of them and heard them taught over the years. But William Booth said late in his life, he said he has one fear and that fear that was one day the Salvation Army would be remembered only as a social organization. Now, where I live here in the USA, very few people know um, the Salvation Army as anything else but a social organization. I know it's known for more than that still in Great Britain and Australia and other places because there are Salvation Army Corps in most towns around um, the UK. But here in the US, it's largely a social organization. And that's because in the early days of the Salvation Army, of course, and Ongoingly, the vision of it with the booths was to really bring social transformation, change of life, uh, full salvation to people's lives, which wasn't uh, just to bring them into the saving knowledge of Jesus, but also into fullness of life in every way and to see their culture, their lifestyle, everything redeemed. And uh, he once said, William Boo, that the chief danger of the 20th, 21st century will be religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, and politics without God, and heaven without hell. In other words, he saw a Christianity coming that would lead more to humanistic ways, and just with man at the center of it, than the whole living word of God being real in the world in which we live, and Christians really committed to live by the word and that which Jesus taught us how to live. 
particularly in areas like the Sermon on the Mount and through those kingdom fundamentals or manifesto that he gave us to live through. And so we understood that the increased understanding uh, that although our salvation is not by good works, the outworking of our salvation is that we do good works. And um, I know that's become very real over this time. As I said, even your prime minister honored the way the church has been doing good works in the nation. But we're here for more than just good works, aren't we? We're here also for those people who we do good works with to come into that full salvation saving knowledge of Jesus Christ that he, they can know him as their father and therefore live in, in the kingdom of his son Jesus and really see that whole kingdom life extended on earth there was uh, two outworkings two anointings in Jesus life if you like and in Luke four eighteen, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he sent me to heal the brokenhearted proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to bring just hope into the whole of culture and everything that we face and around us in life. It's a very special call that God has put in our life and one that he lived himself. You see, Jesus came with all those things to set man free in every part of his life. And so therefore, salvation was never just to be spiritual. It was wholeness for the whole man. And to be wholeness for the whole man, it becomes wholeness for his household, for his culture, for his town, nation. Because God's heart is that this glory that he came to bring would spread across the whole earth until the whole earth saw the glory of the Lord. It was uh, St. Francis of Assisi that said, uh, be a witness all day, every day, and when necessary, use words. Uh, I think that's kind of wonderful, really, that he was expressing that just the way we live as life and um, in the world that we live in, that people would see something good just by the way we live, the way we conduct our personal life, our integrity, faithfulness, uh, our witness just by the way we live in our workplaces, in our situations, the way that we serve the community, the way that we rule, not by headship down, not by the top down, but by taking a basin and a towel and washing people's feet, just like Jesus did. It was John Wesley who went on to say uh, something very special. He said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you can, do good. Because he realized that doing good would not bring us salvation. But once we got to know the king and were seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, then good deeds were flowing out of us and covering the world. Now, I know that I've shared uh, some of this uh, with you before and sometimes many times, but um, I just felt that we're in a time in Great Britain, we're in a time around the world, and particularly as we move into a, a post-COVID era, that we need to see a couple of things take place. One is that which I've been talking to you about in the doing good, uh, but also that naturally supernatural life outpoured in us again. Because we cannot see happen what we want to see happen just with natural strength and natural wisdom. We need the supernatural prophetic heart of God that flows through us, that reaches out to people, that knows things that we can share in the people's lives that can bring them into freedom. And the wonderful joy of doing that is obviously such a blessing. You know, Acts 10, 38 is such a precious scripture that I'm reminding you again of to, to the, uh, this morning for you. When it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You know, what a wonderful thing that that is a model life that Jesus wants us to live. That we don't go out just to get people to come to a church meeting or come and do some religious things. We want to go out, live amongst people, and people see that as we live among them, that God is with us. 
not because we're all religious or super spiritual, but we're just ordinary people doing good, serving with a a basin and towel, we might say, positioning ourselves with a servant heart, and yet still setting all those that were oppressed free from the devil, seeing what Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us for all those kinds of reasons, so we can really bring this good news to the world. So while serving our communities in every way that we can, and I know you are and we are and the church at large is, and uh, Britain, I think, is one of those wonderful stories uh, in the world of how you've stepped up to the mark to serve community. Some of the stories that I'm hearing across from across Britain are just, you know, are very just um, precious to hear the way that you've picked up the mantle to be the light into the world. But while we're serving our communities in every way that we can, let us also share the love of the Father through introducing them to the King of the Kingdom who came to seek and to save those which was lost. Not just the people that were lost, but towns, cities, neighborhoods, nations, uh, workplaces, all the arenas of life uh, from that we serve into, uh, just to bring healing, and wholeness. I believe we're coming in in this time to a very special time. I began to share over one or two years prior to the COVID um, pandemic hitting the earth that we were coming into a real seismic shift in the body of Christ in the church. Now what I mean by a seismic shift is a time when everything moves. If you like 500 years ago, Uh, when the Protestant Reformation started, then something shifted when that happened with Luther in Germany. A lot of things shifted. National boundaries changed. Laws changed. All kinds of things for good and bad shifted. There was a a seismic shift. And there's been a number over time, but probably one in many of our lifetime or a few of our lifetime was back 50 or 60 years ago when there was such a seismic shift on the earth that the charismatic movement and the Jesus people revolution happened and things just changed dramatically. Um, Before that, and I was alive before that and through that, I got, Marilyn and I got married on the first day of 1970. And that's when a lot of this that I'm talking to you about now was happening in the 60s and 70s. But something broke loose on the earth. You know what I mean when I say prior to that, if you had a, an organ in a church service and a piano, you were kind of known as free. But then this whole thing broke loose that we called freedom and the charismatic movement and worship bands came into being, guitars were in church buildings, we were singing new songs, there was a new music, something new was happening, and the world was going through tremendous change. People were frustrated with political situations, we were in a war that we thought would know no end, that we knew was Vietnam, There was all kinds of uh, protests going on in the streets, people coming out of universities uh, um, and protesting. There was just a a move and a longing for something new. And that which was birthed at that time uh, has kept us for the last 50 or 60 years in so many ways, uh, in the way we do church, live church, and all of that. And there hasn't been a seismic shift like that since. And I began to share a couple of years before COVID, that we were starting to move into that again. And I can't give you all the answers, all that it's going to look to, but I know it's here. And I know it's upon us. And although God didn't give us COVID, he has used it to hasten that day. And I believe the shift in the church, in communities, in nations, all kinds of things are going to be just as big, if not bigger than what happened 50 or 60 years ago. So our heart in these days is not to ask the question, what will our church look like or what will churches even look like after COVID? The question we need to ask is, Father, what are you releasing from heaven in such a time as this? How are you extending your kingdom on earth through all this? And how do we in our churches, communities of believers, um, how do we serve that to bring that to the full? And if that means far more than bringing people to us, We're going to the people, which I believe it is, and I believe this Gen Z or post-millennial age particularly, they're not just looking for something that will bless them, they're looking for something that will change the world. 
I heard a wonderful man on World Vision and, uh, or on Vision for the World and that speak at the conference of that last weekend and just giving statistics globally of what's really going on in the advancement of the kingdom. Very moving, but amongst them he said, we just very few years, I mean very few, just within a two or three years on one of these things and a few more on something else, there will not be a nation left on the world, not really largely, um, a, a, a strong um, people group in na in a nation like that that doesn't hasn't heard the gospel has the Bible even in its own language, and it's also said out there that even with the unreached people groups that are still left in the earth, within just a very few years now there will not be even a an isolated unreached people group without someone being there that knows Jesus loves the Lord and basically will have the availability of scriptures in language they can understand. When Jesus said 2,000 years ago, go into all the world, he meant it, and we could well be that generation that's living in that day, at least that way, where it's going into the world. But amongst that, he also said, go preach that gospel of the kingdom, so all the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdoms of our God. So I encourage you to go forth. Go forth with a message of the king and his kingdom and uh, we look forward to seeing you later on in the year in person to person and some of you even this coming week online god bless you